when a lion is hunting a herd, they're never going after the herd with the expectation that we're going to get all of them. They don't even expect to get many of them. Their strategy and purpose in attacking the herd is just to simply spread the herd. They spread them out and then they wait for the weak ones to fall behind. And those are the ones that they attack. We have six children, and Scott was number three out of six. His older brother and sister were really good kids. Excel in school, excel in everything they did, honored their parents, obeyed the rules, model. Teenagers. Scott moved down here and I got his key. And then we got Scott. He seemed to have a little bit more problems with integrity, honesty, and we would ask him questions and we knew that what he was saying wasn't exactly true. You right, Cass Scott? He argued with my parents a lot and I know my parents really struggled. I remember thinking, you can't make me go to church. And so I sat in the first meeting, and then as soon as that dispersed and people went to their various classes, I just left. And that was probably the beginning of an active movement for me to rebel. He started to run around with kids that were older than him. The way I met Scott was in our teenage years, just through some mutual buddies. I think a lot of teenagers, you know, they don't really know who they are. You're just kind of caught in the moment, caught with the environment. Uh, and I think, unfortunately, sometimes for teenagers and adults, the environment can get the best of them. It hurt me to see their struggle knowing that there wasn't really much I could do about it. He didn't really listen to me. I just remember him coming in one day and saying, Mom, I'm not like Eddie and I'm not like Jolene, so don't expect me to be because I'm not like either one of them. The more we battled, I think the farther I pushed away. When I was 14, I decided to try smoking a cigarette. By the time I was 15, I think I had drank alcohol and gotten drunk. I had a big group of friends from school. They became my priority. I remember my family going for summer vacations and when they left, I remember getting my friends and basically saying like, great, we've got this house to ourselves all week. We threw parties there and we drank and we smoked in the house. Then they went out of town and they locked the house and didn't let me in. And so then I broke in and we had parties. Impulsivity ruled my life. I didn't think of the consequences for myself and for others. I found myself in and out of jail a number of times. I don't think I was even 18 yet, maybe 17. My parents wouldn't bail me out because it became such a frequent thing. I don't see how I didn't end up dead or a life imprisonment with the path that I was on. Now what are we celebrating today? My birthday. What do you wish? I wish that, um, I was at church. You wish that you were at church? When a lion is hunting a herd, they wait for the weak ones to fall behind. I see this now as the church being the herd and my family being the herd. And Satan, very intentionally through time, turn me against them or turn me away from them. Scott did not attend my graduation. He didn't attend my wedding. He had different priorities at the time and I understood that. I just hoped and prayed for the best for him. In that moment of my life, the people who I wanted to love me didn't love me. The people who loved me, I didn't care about. I couldn't see any further than the darkness right in front of me. I 
I didn't want to come around because I knew of their disappointment and that they weren't happy with the decisions that I was making. After high school, I started bartending and I got really good at it. I was offered jobs uh, at really popular places that were hard to get a job at and I was proud of my achievements. I couldn't share those with my family, so I shared them with my friends. I remember at a family dinner during that time that I reluctantly showed up after persistent invitations by my mom. And my older brother and sister were there with their newly married spouses who I didn't know well, didn't know me, but I'm certain that they had heard all the stories and I was certain that they also disapproved of me. But I remember being at dinner and my sister-in-law interrupted the conversation and said, Scott, how was the bar last night? Were you guys busy? How was it? And I remember being caught off guard um, because I knew that she wouldn't have approved that lifestyle, but she did see that it was important to me. And she decided to take an interest. And I don't remember probably any other family dinner as much as I remember that. In some ways, she pioneered this, you know what, let's just love Scott. Let's celebrate his accomplishments. And I remember after that, having been much more interested in spending time with my family. We tried to continue to ensure that he understood that we loved him for who he is and reinforced a lot of his positive traits. And he had a whole lot of very positive traits. That's one of the things Scott told me at one point after he started coming back. He said, Mom, if there's anything that anybody asked you that you did right, just tell them you love me. I really feel like it was Melissa that turned him around. So we met my freshman year of college. We were working at the same restaurant. I was a hostess and he was a bartender. On one of our dates, we went out to eat. I remember it was at Shuck and Jive. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't remember. I remember the table that we were sitting at. Wow. I don't remember what the conversation was, but it must have just come up that my family were members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so I said, are you a member of the church? Like, do you participate? I think I said, no, I don't even go to church. I said, well, just so you know, I'm never going to be Mormon. Yeah, and then I said, like, great, me either, who cares? Let's keep eating. <laughs> Once Scott and I were married and we started having children, that was the motivator for us to say, okay, we really need to get it together. Scott would always naturally go back to, well, let's go to the church that I used to go to as a kid. So I was always saying, nope, told you, I'm not doing that. So we started going to a Baptist church where our son was going to a Mother's Day Out program. And we were going there almost every Sunday. Things were going really well in our family. We were happier than we ever had been. Scott and I were closer than we ever had been. One morning, um, I had woken up early to read the Bible. I think I paused to say a prayer. And while I was praying very distinctly, I remember hearing words in my mind saying, you need to go to the temple. When I felt the conviction in my heart that that's what the Lord wanted me to do, I hesitated because I knew what a difficult path that would be. 
I got a call from Scott out of the blue and he wanted to know if he could meet with me. And the time that worked the best was before my early morning church meetings. So we met in his office uh, on a Sunday morning at about, about 6 a.m. Our relationship started to really form at that point. When I met with him, he said, we have a lot that we need to do before you'll be able to go to the temple. I think it was a moment when I realized there was no way that I was going to be able to do this without involving Melissa or affecting our family. The Lord wants us to come unto Him, but He also doesn't want to rip our families apart. So I was on a family vacation when Scott came to me and said, I have to tell you something. I'm sorry, but I really have to do this. I definitely never imagined that he would come to me and say, I think I need to join the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I felt so betrayed. I thought, I told you from the very first date that I was not going to be a member of this church. We have four kids now. What am I supposed to do with this information? You want to do this, but what about me? Starting on that path led to the most difficult part of my life and the most tumultuous part of our marriage and family. It was very scary. Scott has said to me before, I, I thought our marriage was over. And for me, that was never even a question. It was more a question of what does our family look like because we can't do two sides of this line anymore. I thought, well, this is always going to be a challenge for their family. So I really needed to listen to the Spirit to understand how I could best help them through this process. This good bishop, he invited me to slow down. It's not more important for me to move as quickly as I could to the temple than it was to love my wife and to preserve our marriage. And that was just really surprising to me. He helped me to understand exactly how important the family is to God. I got to the point where I just said, no matter the consequences, I have to know because it is tearing our family apart. And I did try. I read the Book of Mormon. At first, I couldn't even open the book. Slowly, I was able to get through one chapter, then another chapter. I got to the end, and I expected to have this overwhelming answer of, yes, the church is true. You need to join this church. And I got to the end, and I didn't feel anything. If this is something that I really want, why won't God change my heart? And looking back at it, when I was asking, I would think, God, should I join this church? But in the back of my mind, it was, I hope not, because I, I don't want to change my lifestyle. And so I think I was secretly hoping that it wouldn't be true. It wasn't until I felt like I had hit rock bottom that I got that answer. One day I was taking a walk around the lake and I felt in my mind the words, come as you are. I knew that that was Christ telling me that I didn't need to know all the answers. This was the path that would make our family whole. I had to decide that I wanted to do it for Christ and that was my only reason, my only motivation. It became easier to dedicate my life to Him as I focused solely on Him. And that's what I want to share with people. I have experienced the love of Christ and nobody can ever take that away from me. Since that day, when I had that strong impression and heard those words in my mind, I was determined to follow 
the path that God had led me towards and it was tremendously difficult and there was lots of really high and really low moments. Finally getting to go to the temple was the culmination of all of those efforts. Looking back, I see how Christ can do the impossible, something that we never thought our family would be able to get through. We were able to with His grace. That's the greatest story that Moss and I want to tell, that the Lord can do anything. He can take anyone from any place and help them achieve unachievable things. He never gives up on us. The impossible happened.